Hello everyone, hi, it's me again and I've got an exciting speaker talking to us today. We've got Rebecca Daniels and I've known Rebecca for a long time, um, mainly through family connections and I had no idea really what she was doing or what she's been up to all these years. So I'm excited to find out more about the fascinating enterprise that uh, uh, Rebecca's done in that she started a nucleus network for women in business and yeah. for me sorry i was just going to say daniel um rebecca that um it came out of the blue for me it was quite a surprise so i'd love to know more can you tell us what the network's about and um who it's aimed at and how you got there what what made you yeah. do it so thank you very much for having me on your channel today. Um, yeah, you're right. We've known each other for, I would probably say, I've known your daughter for about 10 years. So um, we've seen you, yeah, within that time. Um, Nucleus Networking, it's um, a reasonably new venture for me. Um, we started in, um, I'll say June 2018, so not long ago. Um, and it is a community hub online on Facebook. Um, for women who are in business or women who are interested in business um, and predominantly I would say also for mums as well um, and the reason why that started was because I was a new mum so hello um, I had my daughter in uh, April 2017 um, and I decided on possibly having a career change um, and I didn't really know where to go to for support for that. Um, I didn't really know um, who to speak to. I didn't really know where to start. Um, I couldn't attend the networking events um, that were local to me just because I was a mum and had no childcare. Um, solution to me was if there is a problem, solve it. Um, and that's where uh, Nucleus came from. Yeah, so you, you fill, filled your own space really, the gap in your way forward, you found your own solution. Yeah, 100%. Like I think um, I'm, I'm an educator by, um, by profession. So I always say that if you haven't got something that's, um, sorry, that's a gap, there's a niche, um, then that means that there's a, a, there's a wide range of people out there that are also in the same position as you. So why not plug that gap? Um, that's, that's yeah, and, and that's so true, isn't it? There are a lot of people, a lot of women, especially with families out there who actually don't know where to start. So tell me a little bit more about your previous business then, or, or are you running them alongside each other? I, I, so what, as an educator, what, what's your background? Um, so before becoming a teacher, um, I have a degree and a background in journalism, um, print and TV broadcasts. Um, and from there, I realised um, the struggles and difficulties that people had with literacy. Um, secret to say that a lot of journalists can't really write. <laughs> say that out loud and be offended but um, a lot of people do have literacy issues and they mask it um, for obviously the world of technology that we have today you've got Surrey that can dictate you've got um, the Microsoft Word and you've got other programs that can assist people so I thought from there let me go back to the root let me find out where the problems um, occurred and so I trained um, in secondary education um, as an English literacy and media studies teacher um, and found my passion there um, over the 10 years of working in education, I then realised that literacy actually isn't really taught um, after primary school. Um, and those people that um, struggle with literacy are often, and I know it's stereotypical to say, but often from um, disadvantaged backgrounds, so single parent households, low income families, um, English as additional language, there's so many different key groups of kids out there. Um, and then that just stems into adulthood, because they leave secondary education with uh, low literacy, they're entering adult hood and adult world and um, again with the same problem and it just opens up so many other kinds of worms like homelessness and gang and youth crime and um, you know mental health um, so my aim with my company which is jigsaw education is to plug that gap and provide um, not only the disadvantaged community but that's my my key cause um, with literacy skills that can help them professionally or personally that's interesting um, as well yeah. because coming back to nucleus um, network. I use. I, I am a, a literacy specialist as well. That's where I started my team. Ah, didn't know that. And I worked with adults who had been designated as stupid and incompetent when they were very young, who then never overcame that through secondary school or college. Never went to college and could not even f complete a form 
to yeah that's what i find Mm. So when it comes to business and the nucleus um, network in particular, my experience of networking is that there are very often women who are um, illiterate or have poor literacy skills or, or, and also numeracy skills. And they're starting a business based on their love of something. Mm. And it holds a lot of women back. So that's very key, I think, to you working with women in business is the fact that you have this understanding because we're, we're told all the time it's got to be good copies got to be good you've got a blog you've got to write articles you need a book you need to speak in public and um, there, there is a percentage of women in networks who have the ability to run great businesses who lack confidence and need support in those early days but have you um i'm not suggesting that you you name and, and identify anybody, but have you noticed anything like this already in, in your new enterprise with the Nucleus Network? 100%. Um, so now I am um, more involved in the business world um, and out of the school environment. Um, I'd probably say about 60% of businesses I am spotting um technical accuracy issues i'm spotting people that um are not necessarily confident with um their oracy their presentation um didn't know it existed because i've been trapped in the school world for so long i just assumed that everyone was confident everyone was literate to some degree um and i do find that some women um are very hesitant to as you say post on social media because they know that their spelling and their grammar is um, inaccurate and then that goes that also links to like their self-esteem and it just links to so many different issues that they um, find so that's why I'm here <laughs> well, I <think laughs> um, that's, another, another issue. that's a very important issue that you raised there is the, the confidence and the lack of um, courage and mm. I was talking to somebody yesterday about um, the need for possibly the need for all male networks same as there are female network right. we had a broader discussion and one, one of the things that we discussed was the fact that women in particular have the need for their own groups because of yeah. the need of um, bravado whereas men will often display bravado and and force courage and and get themselves out there even if they're very nervous women don't and women have a whole different mindset about themselves which um doesn't exclude men from having those feelings but the majority of women need and feel comfortable to grow and yeah. they can compete with men and go into the a lot of the forums so i'm not obviously not all women it's a generalization but there is a large number and that's often why the, the female only business networks are needed and so popular what do you think do you think that's your experience as well <clears throat> Yeah, one hundred percent. I think um, as again, we're not we're not going to stereotype, but we can, right? Um, so the male persona is that they don't necessarily want to show those emotions, um, whether they are struggling or whether they need help and ask for help. Um, it's a pride thing. It's an ego thing. Whereas women, we are very much, um, and this is why I call nucleus a community hub, like just a central zone, and that's why nucleus is nucleus because we are the epitome of everything. We're the start of everything. And I think that as women, we are very much more confident um, and open and able to ask for support, but also able to give it. Um, and a lot of women that do come to the networking, they like the fact that they're just going to be women there because of that reason, exactly what you've just said. There are not men there bragging about how much they've made this year and this month and, you know, how many clients they've got. Um, and we, as um, a tribe of women, we're just so supportive. Um, and we're allowing children. You might get a man, you know, attending our event thinking, why are the kids here? Be quiet. And we're just can kind of understand that's just part of life. That's just part of what we go through. And so, um, yeah, you'll find women in my group that run around giving kids pencils, even if they're not their children, um, just to keep them occupied so that mum can actually make a living and make something for herself. So, yeah, you're right. There is a massive market for women networking groups. I think the other thing is that... Sorry. Well, that isn't to say that I don't allow men. So we've got a charity event coming up soon. Um, I think that charity is for everyone to get involved in. So I will invite the men to that event if they want to come. So yeah, we do sneak in the men now and again. But, yeah, not all the time. That also depends if the men want to sneak in. I mean, there are some yeah. that that can harmonise very clearly 
and be the only person in the only man in the room yeah i'm, I'm thinking um more along the lines that women come from uh, we're very community orientated and yet we can be quite isolated and have mental health problems when we're running a business of low self-esteem motivation actually applauding our own success seeing our own achievements and that's why some people find it so uh, so much of necessity to actually get out and yeah. with other women uh, and talk about women's issues and childhood, childhood rearing, child rearing, etc. Um, it's that loneliness and, and then the ability to leave the city or leave your company or start alone and then not actually feel very comfortable doing that. Yeah. So is that one of your experiences? I mean, you don't have to tell us everything because obviously you've got family. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really worried to to run your own business how did that feel so I um as I said as, as a new mum I realized that my passion was in education but I also realized that I could give more um and I started to look into ways um that I could do that that made me happy but also that allowed me to have that work-life balance because mental health as you said is, is important and we all suffer from it um, and I started feeling, I don't know, slightly anxious because as a teacher and as you know, I would have to come home, but mark books, mark assessments, plan. And I was becoming so tired. Um, I had no energy for myself, my family, for my daughter. Um, and I find that in business that still does happen. Um, I just feel that people need to be aware that they have control over that because it belongs to you. Um, you are your own employer. Um, and so I like the fact that like last week, I'll, I'll tell a little secret, but last week I didn't do any business work for about a few days, um, just to allow me to process and get my head um, straight and allow my thoughts to kind of just manifest and figure out where I'm going. Um, whereas in my job, my job job, um, you can't really do that. You don't really have time to do that because you know you need to be there every day, you need to show up for your children or your students, sorry, um, and you need to make sure that you're the best that you can be at all times because, and that's how I see it because I'm passionate about my job. Um, so yeah, no, I have. I, and I do feel um, self-conscious sometimes as well at the moment now. Um, and I do feel slightly insecure um, just because I turn up on a secret here. I've handed in my notice. It's all right. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, like a couple of days ago. Um, and my friends don't know about it yet. Um, and so I know that this will go out after that, so they'll know. But that makes me feel really, really nervous and insecure. Um, and yeah, I do feel that as my mental health there is, is suffering, but actually no, because I've taken a risk. So I feel elated and I feel um, excited for the future. <laughs> but on the other side, I'm like, I've got a house and a baby and bills and no job. So yeah. mental health, I think, is something that we constantly are always battling. Um, and no one can ever say that they've never experienced anything like that, because I don't believe that at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just, uh, it's really important. I think, again, as women, we can support each other. Um, it's a very scary time. I know, even, even though I was coming to the end of my career, um, it was a case of should I hang on for another few years and follow the norm but inside me I knew that I was going to have um, poorer health my mental well-being would have drained I was getting not depressed but I was very low you know I was very demotivated and then as yeah. soon as I started planning my future and, and actually seeing a way forward and I didn't do quite the same as you, but I did spend a year planning and setting up my website and different things before I made the transition and handed my notice in and I dropped my hours. So I made mm. a slower transition to start with, but there comes that time when you have to hand your notice in and you have to bite the bullet. And yeah. it's, it's a very exciting adventure, but the realistic side of it is that you do have to make some adjustments. And it's not going to be plain sailing. And I think that's where the, the networking and upholding your weakness in your skills, if you have you know, writing issues, reading issues, numeracy issues, then you need that support and you need to get it early. And, yeah. you know, starting yourself is going to be like riding down a, a river. You know, you might hit the rapids, but you'll also have the calm. 
and do yeah. the adventure. So I, I personally, I hope you do too, but I personally feel I've got a much better lifestyle, much happier and, um, and this, forward. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't finished my job yet, but you're right. I do feel, I don't know, I feel different. As soon as I did it, mm-hmm. um, and in my notice, I, I came home and I said to my partner, I don't feel sad. Like I feel, I felt like a weight because I was, as I said, working um, in education. I was running Nucleus, running Jigsaw, mummy, um, partner, sister, daughter, like everything just became so much. So I was like, something has to give, something has to give. What am I passionate about? What do I want? And if I don't do it now, it, I probably would never do it. So it's about biting the bullet, as you said, and cutting, that, cutting the strings. Mm. it's a bit like going through your wardrobe if you take out all the clothes you don't wear don't want don't, don't fit into and just yeah. actually discard them and, and be ruthless then you've got room to get more you know whether you see something in the sale or you actually purposefully go and buy a new suit you know it's yeah it's emptying so that it can be refilled and um i i have seen women struggle and i think that's why network is so important and finding time for yourself and actually giving yourself permission to stop. I, mm. I went to a retreat for a week. I spent seven and ten days in a retreat at one time just to make sure I knew um, I was heading, my business was heading in the right way and that I had made the decisions I needed to make and that I needed to carry on. Um, nice. so it's having that clarity and not getting bogged down with all the minutiae of everything and other people's pull on you, you know, as a woman. Yeah. When you start something new, people are often waiting for it to catch you. They want to catch you when you fall. And yeah. they may love you, but they have that expectation sometimes that you're just not going to do it and it's going to be too hard and you've never done it before. Yeah. Um, and mix it my, with my, 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 my close, um My close ones around me, they said to me, um, have you really thought about this? Hmm. said, yes and no. And they're like, well, that's not really the answer we're looking for. And I was like, well, I have thought about it because I wouldn't be doing it. But no, I don't know how it will go. So I haven't thought about it in terms of that sense. Just live the moment and go for it. And that's not me at all. If you uh, spoke to anyone that knew me, they would know Rebecca plans everything down to the team. She, she doesn't go off course like that um, in terms of life. But in terms of education, I'm like wacky and all over the place. So, yeah this is a different different route for me but um yeah no i'm excited well that's so exciting too because i want i love that word excitement because excitement and adventure because you just mm. think about yourself you didn't know and yeah things, and you overcome things and uh, you discover perhaps other ways that you want to develop and it is a development i think the one thing yeah. about your job is that quite often you reach the ceiling and you can't move any further or or the advancement avenues are pretty linear or challenging mm. Whereas when you're running a business, you can actually, you know, it's your life, it's your oyster and you yeah. make it what you want. So yeah. um, I'm hoping that will be your case as you see your children grow and be a role yeah. model for them, be a role model for other women and, and a role model for your own children. And that was really important for me when I had Sophia because, um, so I never really wanted children actually. Well, actually, no, not to a lot. I did want children, but I don't know, not not now I was I was happy to be an older parent mm-hmm. um, and then when she came along something just switched mm-hmm. and it was like okay so now what am I going to do for her um and not in terms of clothe her feed her love her but what am I going to do for her in terms of what can she see from me mm-hmm. and I think I have a lot of children that I come across um in my job that don't have those positive role models um, and I think that is the stem that stems from everything in terms of like it leads them into so many different paths. Um, some kids could take that and not do so well, and some kids could take that and do extraordinarily well. And I just wanted Sophia to see that when she saw me growing up. So what does your mummy do? And you know what I do, and and be proud of that, and know that you know I, I worked and I looked after her and I I built something, and also something she could be part of as well. I was just laughing because my grandson flitted into my mind. He thinks I'm famous. He's up on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> He's seen pictures of me. Because um, he knew I was a teacher, but he never saw me standing up in 
in universities talking to, to groups of students in um, lecture theatres. So he's seen photographs of me at expos and the forums. That's and so lovely. Images, you know, and so in his mind, he thinks I'm a celebrity. But he also sees that you're doing something as well. Do you know what I mean? You know, I don't know if you're grandma or nanny, but he also sees that you know, you're there and you're doing something and that's that's a really lovely thing. I think one of the one of the things with um with him is that I'm embr I embrace technology and mm -hmm. I'm brave. And that is one of the things that I wanted to um be a role model for for my um children and my own children and my grandchildren is that yeah. Um, yes, a lot of technology is beyond me, but you can get someone to do it. But I have learned so yeah. much. And, and you can learn. Yes, and, and um, because I don't want that gap to be there, but if women are afraid of learning new technology and can't see how they can afford to, to pay someone to do things for them, it holds them back. And um, I think being in a group and being around other young business women is, yeah. is a way of, of asking the question, what do I do, where do I go, what, how, how much is this going to cost, Who's, who have you used? You know, those sort of questions is, is where a, a, a network group can actually really help you secure your business and your self-esteem. Can see, I learned from you today because you're telling me how to use Zoom. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. It doesn't matter about age, does it? At all. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I think Nucleus is so important to me as well, is because somebody, the group is so informal. And so if someone, like you just said, has a small question about like how to change my thumbnail, on a YouTube channel or on Facebook or how to resize my cover photo, mm -hmm. go to the group as a first point of call and somebody, and um, we're at four, almost 400 members now, which is fab, but somebody there must know the answer to that. And they, the person doesn't have to pay someone um, to do it for them. They could save themselves money. They could also learn a new skill, but also it might give somebody else a sense of satisfaction that they've helped somebody else in their business as well. Mm. And, and you never know what um, surprises you get in life. You know, mm -hmm. it was only a few weeks ago that we arranged to have this chat and interview and talk, talk about these subjects. These mm -hmm. are things that wouldn't happen if you're sitting at home working on your jewellery in your own yeah. office and making your own calls to make your sales. You know, there's yeah. expansion that comes from mixing with expanding people and, and women. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what's exciting. So um, I look forward to your expansion then and to oh, see yes. <laughs> My expansion. I'm really, really trying. I'm, I'm trying to see how we can, I, I need to go down the registration route actually and figure out what um, like legal entity is the best one for us. But I think um, as a community interest company, I think that's what, what we at 100% are. Um, expansion in terms of, yeah, so seeing how we can continue to boost the group, how we continue to develop literacy. Um, and then the next stage is for me to apply for funding, um, to see how we can, you know, get other local governments um, and local funding agencies to, to back and support the work that we do. So that's my mission. And of course, what's happening immediately that you mentioning something you're looking for, I go into mode of who do I know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Who achieve this? Yeah, I met in the past, and um, so basically, that's one of the benefits of working together is that people jump because most women want to help and support. That's a part yeah. of our nature. We're not that competitive, we don't think, Well, I don't no. want you to do well because no. I, I run my own, I host my own network. I don't think, Oh, I don't want to do very well because she'll take my people. I send my people to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You actually did. Like the first 100 people that came to my group and I was like invited by and I saw Victoria and I was like, <laughs> uh, but there, there are a small proportion of people out there that don't have the same mindset as us, Victoria. It's sad to say there are, um, but the majority of women do have that same mindset. And I always tell um, the women on my group, go to other events. I do. So why can't you? Just because, you know, we host these events doesn't mean that we are limited to our own. Um, you know, I'm attending one on Wednesday that's not mine, but I'm really excited to go and meet new people and meet new women and see, again, how it can help me boost my business or how I can help somebody else. And, and the key to that is that the whole idea of the global woman is that um, women in lots of different countries stand up but are recognised mm -hmm. by each other. 
So I, yeah. I, I'm looking at um, all these different organisations and you'll see my posts go up about women that have succeeded in Africa or India or wow. you know, okay. they're in different countries, they're in, all around the world because as they stand up, we stand up and, and mm. we feel I mean, it's beyond just our own businesses. It's how we are role models for our children, etc. But it's also how we actually overcome these problems about feeling inadequate and treading into a new world. So I think when you go out from your own nucleus and you express an interest elsewhere, then other adventures come up. And yeah. then as women rise around you, the competition doesn't really come into it because as they rise, so can you. So can you, yeah. If someone's business is doing really well and they're on the media, and then, then you can do it. Yeah, no, it's true. It really is true. And I always say, um, my dad always used to tell me to surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, this is when I was younger. At that age, I never really got what he meant at 14, 15, 16. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, and from there if you watch their success then you can also share their success and have your own success never ever knew what that meant never ever until now um and it's true like surrounding myself with like-minded women um granted there are quite a few of you <laughs> on the group but it's nice to see how you got there see what efforts you're putting into your business see who's there to support you see how i can support you how you can support me um and as you say, climb together. We're amazing, Victoria. Like women are amazing. <laughs> We're so we know that, but we just don't oh, believe it. We know that, but we will literally like dominate everywhere. Um, and I think that we are doing that. We are actually doing that. And actually it's filtering down into the younger generations as well. I'm seeing a lot of teenage girls. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up um, grow up when I ask them? Oh, I want to, you know, be my own, um, I want to be a beautician um, and I want to own my own salon or I want to, there's a lot of female engineers out there as well that are lurking, lurking in, um, in the shadows. Um, and I think a lot of them now are seeing women like you and me and um, other famous, you know, entrepreneurs out there and they're thinking, yeah, it's possible, I can do this. I think also the, the, there's a big movement to bring men on board who are, are heart <coughs> and totally supporting women's growth and development because they can see that women contribute so much and yet we've, we've mm. the, the world has not really tapped into or used the, the immense um, capacity that women have to improve things and to grow and nurture things and I think as that changes um, the, 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 the action should be that we are in harmony with each other and what I find interesting is that I think we were talking before we started about um, young girls, the single mothers of the Thatcher era, mm -hmm. who were ostracised and degraded for being a drain on society, have actually produced children, offspring now, who are millennials, who are active in society, who are far more heart-centred and stronger for being raised in those conditions. And it's, it's nice to see young men coming through with a much stronger understanding of women's um, need to to stand up and grow and and to be part of society and and our economy our economy mm. yeah <laughs> yeah no you're so right and I think um as you say a lot of women um have been judged for being single parents um or have not been supported as much as um I think they should have or could have been um but yeah you're right because the boys from those households are looking at these role models, these female role models who um, have struggled or um, worked really, really hard to nurture and love and um, yeah, motivate. And I think these boys or men, wherever they are, um, I definitely think they should get in contact with you because um, it'll be really, really nice for them to stand up and, and speak out about, you know, how we can support women and how women can support men, um, you know, because that's said something that we should be doing together as a, as a joint venture and not going head to head with each other and thinking there's a massive you know competition and women are was it women from men are from mars women are from venus that you know we're all from the same planet <laughs> even if we think differently we do let's not get that wrong we do think differently but actually what a male can think and what a woman can think could actually build some amazing businesses and amazing products together so 
Brilliant. That's lovely. Well, that's a great idea to end our um, little chat. Definitely. With. We've talked for a long time, but yeah. a lot of important issues and, and hopefully motivate a lot of people. So um, can I just ask you then, those that are watching now would like to get in touch with you, Rebecca. So can you tell me, so it's Rebecca Daniel. And yeah. Daniel or Daniels? Daniel. No S. So Daniel. Yeah, just Daniel. <laughs> okay. So could you give us some... Um, information then how, how can people contact you today if they want to talk to yeah you? um so our nucleus networking for women is predominantly on facebook at the moment um and we are at facebook.com slash groups slash nucleus networking um you can join our group which is a closed group or you can like our page um, and feel free to message me on that um and then for jigsaw education which is our uh, literacy um enterprise you can again find us um, at, oh, sorry, facebook.com uh, forward slash jigsaw edu or um, www.jigsaw-education.com. Um, if you need literacy development, contact us. Excellent. I will obviously put that in the description. So it's uh, jigsaw edu and nucleus network. So wonderful. Yes. So yeah, I'll thank you then. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank um, you so much, Victoria. I really appreciate it. We haven't actually spoken to each other very much in the last 10 years. So it's fascinating no. for me to find yeah. out. Right. Well, Definitely. You. And hopefully we'll continue to network again again in the future. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, You're going to have to log off this because I don't know how to cancel it. You're going to have to teach me now again. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye to everyone and then I'm going to turn off the recording and then i'll talk to you more which is how we learn <laughs> okay so speak to you again bye all right then bye bye okay that's off yes yeah yeah it says recording